hello everyone welcome back to the google snippet channel so in this video we'll be building a simple login api using gwt authentication so we'll just be looking at gwt with go how to do gwt with go so what is um gwt authentication so basically the usual way or the traditional way of doing things before before gwt was all the authentication you need to do concerning um retrieving or getting or getting access to a particular resource is really done on the server side so um, the server does some authentication before a particular a user can access a particular page or a particular resource. So let's say like the login API we are building today. Say we are building the website and the home page you have to log in before you can actually visit the dashboard or the home page. So the authentication is done on the server side before the user can access the home page. So but with the advent of GWT authentication, the thing is the client does all the authentication, then generates a token, and that token is sent to the server. Then for each time um, a user wants to access a particular resource, the token is sent to the server, and the server processes the token and checks if it is valid. And if it is valid, it sends back the information to the client that this person is allowed to access this page else this person is not allowed to access this page so that's basically what we'll be looking at in today's video using go so before we move into the video i would like to mention that if you are new to the channel please make sure you subscribe because i also drop i drop content on all things go then if you are not new to the channel but you've been following videos in this channel and you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing too so with that move into the code so i have my server running so we'll just see what the code does so i'll come to my well, I was actually running because let me just delete this particular token. So yeah, I have my um I saw I have my browser, so I'll visit local host. So I'm serving on port 1990. Then I want to visit my own page, for example. So now I haven't logged in. If I try to visit my own page, it will direct me to the login page. Then my login page, I will log in with my credentials. So my credentials are user one, then the password is password one. And I'll log in. So now it takes me to the home page welcome user one so if i try to visit the login page again for slash login it takes me back to the home page because i can't log in once i'm logged in so that's basically how it works so now if you look at here on my cookie side the token has been generated for me and this is the value which is our json web token our jwt so this is the token here so how do we go about this let us go into our code and check how it is so first we're looking at our front end which is our html file our login of html and our home html so our login of html is just basically it is then it has a form then um, two input tags one is type username and, and one is type text and the other one is type password so the username and the password then the names are username and password then we have the button to send the request to the back end that the user wants to log in and our home page is just basically a welcome message welcome with whatever the username is so that's our front end. So going to our back end, what do we have? So first of all, for GWT authentication, we always need a particular GWT key. So in this case, I'm actually just calling this one my GWT key. So usually this GWT key should be a secret key. So most times you want to store it in maybe an environmental variable or something. So it is not always good to expose this. So it's always good to store it in, in a as an environmental variable. If you know if you're going to expose it, you should make sure you encode it in some way so it won't be obvious so that is then we'll be having our variable tpl which is our templates just pass just load our html templates which are login.html and our own.html so this variable we use as is just a database so this is like my own um, i'm just using like an in-memory database just like old key value pairs and the key value pairs are basically the usernames to the passwords so the key is the username and the value is the password so when i was logging in the other time i used user one and password one is basically what i've stored here so that is it then i'm having a user struct which is just holding um, our type user so it's going to have to use the username and the password and it's to be json username and json password so the way gwt authentication works is that we need a claim so these claims are actually so this claim just actually a struct so these claims can hold as many information as possible but it's always advisable not to store key sensitive information in the claims like your password so let's say that my user has the under field email then has a field phone number then a few different fields so i can add as many fields to this claim as possible but one thing you should always want to which one thing you should always take care of is don't store sensitive information like the password in claims because um someone anybody can go to so there's an official website for gwt this web token i have forgotten the url but you can just google search so you can just google search google search google search mm, jwt just google search you take it to so one of the first two to three results you take it to the official website of um, jwt so that way if someone 
if you actually expose your password for example in these claims because to be sent to the front end someone can copy it then go to the website for kwt then post it there then the person paste it there the person can actually see all this information so that's why it's actually not good to store sensitive information only this information and um, leave all sensitive information in the back end don't let it go to the front end so that is it so from there we're looking at our login api so our login api for our login we'll switch on the method so if it's the method get we'll first check if the person is logged in so this function login is a function i wrote we won't be looking at it now but we'll be looking at it later so what this does it just returns two things it returns a logged in variable which is also variables the first one is um, a boolean which determines the person is logging or not so if the person is logged in going to return true and the person is not logged in to return false and the second one is actually just the claim so this claims is basically from our type claims here which would all the person's information like the username and if there's an email the email and all those stuff then also our jwt is your standard claims so this field is actually very very important to add to your claims because it's this field that's actually going to let you access the type the claims interface from package jwt so if you look for any variable to be of type claims or jwt.claims what that variable needs to do is so let me just stop my server and i'll do go doc jwt claims so we'll do a little bit of go here so if i look at oh i'm not putting in the name of the package right i think it's package jwt dash go that is it so the claims an interface and for it to be of type claims you need this particular method valid which returns an error but if you look our type claims here does not have this particular valid method that returns an error so how do we get that so we just check in jwt dot so we just do go dot jwt dot go standard claims so let's check standard claims and what's let's see if standard claims as standard claims so let's see if it has the method valid that returns an error so it has the method valid that returns an error so that means if you are of jwt standard claims that means you are of type claims that is the meaning so for this one to also be for this our claims to be of type claims from this package wt we need to actually just embed so what we are doing is we are just composing so i just passing in jwt standard claim which is a type from package wt into our claim struct so that way this our claims inherit every method and every field that this particular type has so in that which also inherits this particular valid method here this valid method that returns an error thereby making it a type claims because that is what type claims means so interface types to be an interface you have to implement all the methods in that particular interface so the method valid error which belongs to this jwt standard claims and since we are passing this as a field into this then our type claims automatically inherits this method which makes it a claims from jwt dash go library so that is basically it so that is what the second value here returns it also returns our claims for us so that is it so if the user is logged in because it takes in one value which is basically a pointer to http request we'll still look at the function later so don't don't be worried about what it is now but it just so that the function does help us check if a particular user is logged in or not so if, if the user is logged in we'll just redirect to our own page then we'll return else if the user is not logged in we'll just um, execute our login of html with no data into it so that is basically it. then on a method post we'll get the user so we'll create a new user so the username will be dot one value username which is basically whatever you put into this input field here because name is username and the password will be whatever you put into this input field here so i create the user from those three information then from there we'll just check inside our database which is our temporary database we'll check we'll pass in the username to our database and we'll see if i want to get a particular value so the value we'll be getting is the password and this okay is just to check if the username is found at the first place so if the username is not found at the first place or the password that we get even if it is found but the password we get is not equal to this password that we're getting from our front end we have to say username or password invalid because the username and the passwords do not tally so they have to tally before the person can log in so from there we'll just create an expiration time this expiration time is for two things first of all it determines the expiration time for our cookie that we'll be putting into our front end because remember when we ran the code and we saw how it works once someone logs in a cookie is generated for the person and the name of the cookie is token and the value is the jwt which is our jc web token so we actually this 
expiration time is actually the time that it takes for that particular token to expire so basically what this time means is that let's say you are working on a new website and you want to make sure that the user logs in every 15 minutes so after every 15 minutes the user session expires and personal the user has to be logging again so that's what this expiration time does is so i doing time dot now that means it means the user logs in adding 15 minutes to that particular time so we will now create our claim so this claim is what we are going to be using to generate our json web token so it's going to be an ampersand claim which is basically our claim struct then the username is the username that we got from the front and then the we'll give it the standard claims then the standard claims here so if you look at dgw to standard claim if i over over it i'm having all these fields so i have access to all these fields so the field is expired at which determines the expiration time and it's an intensity for so we just come to our standard claims field then we'll give it an expired at which is still the expression this dead dot unix turn it to int 64 because expression time remember is of type time but we need a type int 64 as this particular field here so expired field is int 64 so if you call the unix method on it make it an int 64 so that is basically then to get our token so we we'll just do jwt dot new with claims still from this jwt dash go library so if you don't have this you have to run go get then with this name to get this particular library so we'll call the function new with claims then we'll pass in our assigning method so this is our assigning method they are just the algorithms for signing so there are a lot of them so if you have our employee that you should try to reach the specification for jwt in the official website which is what i actually asked us to google search down here so just with the specification you see all the signing methods there so the first one is our jwt signing method which is this then the second parameter is our claims that we created which is these claims we created here then we'll check for the error so oh sorry not the error first so from there we get our token then to get our token string we'll be using the method sign string on this particular token then our the value is going to be a slice of bytes the one we pass in the argument is going to be a slice of bytes and which is our jwt key which is what i declared here as a global variable at the start and i said it's actually something that is sensitive so you most likely want to store this want to store as an environmental variable so that is very important so you just have to keep it somewhere safe so it shouldn't be exposed most times or if you want to expose it make sure it is encrypted first before you expose it so that is basically how to get our token string so now we have our token string we we'll just check if there's an error there is an error we'll just say something went wrong so from there we'll print our token string just to see what our token string looks like then after that we'll create a cookie just to show that the person is logged in and the name will be token and the value will be our token string then the expiration time or when the time will, of the time the cookie takes before it expires is our expiration time that we created up there which is 15 minutes i guess yes 15 minutes so that is basically then we'll set our cookie then we set our cookie we will direct the person to our own page and if it's like any other method apart from method get our method post we will have this particular default case evaluated so it's also to print to it's also to show in the browser that status method not allowed so that is basically it so now our function um, our function um, to does the same thing so we'll first check if the user is logged in and so we'll call our function is logged in which returns if the user is logged in which is this particular very weird and the claims if the user is logged in so if the user is logged in it's going to return false for this and this is going to be new if the user is logged in it's going to return true for this then the claims that we get from this particular function so from there if the user is not logged in can't visit our own page because we need the user to be logged in to visit our own page so we just direct the person back to our login page then if the user is logged in we we'll just execute our home.html we pass in the username into our home.html so if you come back to our home.html that's the information we'll be displaying here so this basically is the username whatever the username is so that's how our home page works then finally we'll check our is logged in so what our is logged in just does is just simply gets our token string from this particular function get cookie value so what this gets cookie value just does is just goes into our cookie then gets our token string from our cookie from us so this name is actually the name of the particular cookie so if you remember when we were logging in we created the cookie and the name is token then the value is token string so we'll just pass this particular name token or whatever the cookie name we give it we'll pass it to this function get cookie value 
which is this VT request, VT pointer to HTTP request that we are actually having in whatever the function is, the handler function is. So with that, it's going to return our value. This is basically the value from the cookie. So how does that work? Let us just quickly check our get cookie value function. So it takes into parameters the request and also the name, which is basically the name of the cookie we want. So it happens that whenever um, you create a cookie, the cookies are basically, apart from the fact that they are cookies, they are also requested as their res um, response are requested as basically headers also. So to get a particular header, you go, how do we get the header? So whenever you set a cookie, it's going to actually be set as a header and the um, name of the header is going to be cookie itself. So that's the name of the header. So it's, this one is not only about Google, every other language. Basically, when you set a cookie, regardless of the language you are using, the cookie is also going to be set as a header, apart from it being set as a cookie. And the name of the header is going to be header cookie. So we just use the request the header does get then this header cookie to get it. So when we get this particular header cookie, if it is an empty string, that means if this does not exist, it's going to return an empty string. So if it's an empty string, we'll just return an empty string also as our value for this function. And if it is if it exists, the way this particular header cookie is always stored, so you can go to Mozilla Developers Network to read about header cookie headers. So the way they actually store this in this way. So let's say I set three cookies in my um API in some way, maybe I set three cookies, then the first one the name is cookie one and the value is value one, then I set another cookie cookie two and value two, then I set another cookie cookie three and value three. The way it's going to be stored as an header is going to be in this format. And this format basically is a string. So I'm when I call this r dot header dot get cookie, I'm going to be having a string that looks something like this. That's what I'm getting. So if the string is empty, that means there is no header cookie, so I'll just return an empty string. And if it is not empty, I'll just do cookie should be string dot split and this cookie header. And I'm splitting it on this semicolon. So remember, this is the format. So if I split on this semicolon, I'll be having a slice that will be containing each cookie. So for for example, now let's assume that this is my request, my cookie header here. So when I do the string dot split this, I'll be having um, a slice, and the values are going to basically be this as a string one, then two, then three so i'll be having three values inside my string so this returns a slice of string and this slice of string assuming this is will be having three values these are basically this so one thing you have to be careful about is that consider this space also there's always also a space in front also so that's one thing you need to take note of so there's actually a space in front so what i do is i'll just bring over each cookie so because this is a slice so i'll range over each cookie to get each cookie so the cookie i'll be getting so each cookie here will be this first on the first iteration then this on the second iteration then this on the last iteration so what i'm doing for each cookie so each cookie i'm going to trim out the space because there's a space in front so i'm trimming out this space trimming out this space when i trim it out and i'll now split this each of them again i'll split them on this a4 to to get the name to get the name and the value as two separate values and they'll be stored also in an in a slice also so that means what i'm doing i'm just going parts so this basically is just going to be a slice with two with two entries. So that's how string of split works. So I'm splitting this particular, I'm splitting each cookie with this on this also. So from then I remember that if I split it, I'll be having this and this as two separate values inside this slice so this one is going to be the first value and this one is going to be zero on second value so the index of this one is zero and this one is one same as this one index zero index one and index zero index one so what i'm just simply doing is that if pass into bracket zero that means the first one equals to the name which we passed into this function here then we just want to return pass into bracket which is basically the value then after we range over everything and we don't have anything like that we just simply return an empty string that means we don't have the cookie that we are trying to get. So that is basically it. So that is it. So we we'll use that function in this place to get our token string. Remember that when we are storing our cookies after we logged in, the value is basically the token string that we generated using GWT. So when we have that, so when we have that as our token string, so we check if it is empty. If it is empty, that means this particular token does not is not existence or the cookie has expired for some reason. Either the cookie has expired or the person hasn't logged in at all. So we'll just return false and new. False means that 
the person is not logged in, then new means that there's no claim since the person is not logged in. So how do you now get our claim? Let's assume that the person is logged in. So to get our claim, we're going to create a an empty claims um, struct, which is basically a placeholder to get our claims back from our token string. So to get our claims back from our token string, we also call the function pass with claims from also this package JWT. So this part of the claims takes in three parameters. The first one is our token string, which is what we got from our cookie. The second one is these claims. So this pass claim is basically just an algorithm that just runs our token string, authorizes those some things, then it generates the claims back from our token string, then it stores it in these claims that we created here. And the third one is just basically this function, a callback function that takes in um, a value t of pointer to JWT the token that it runs an empty interface and an error. So the empty interface will be returning is also our JWT key, which is our secret key that we declared up here again. So don't let us forget about that this year. Is what will be returning as the first value, then the second value will be returning will be new, which is the error value. So we'll just be returning it as that. Then from there, moving on. So after this is run, we will basically have our claims. But if there's an error, we'll just return false and null also. So we're going to print to the console the error passing claims. That means for some reason, maybe the token string is not valid or it is incorrect or something happens that we couldn't pass the claims and most likely it's most likely the fact that the token is actually invalid so from there we we'll just check for the error then if there's no error we'll move on and check if the token is valid again so this one is a field valid to check if the particular token is valid so if the token is not valid again we are going to actually return false and if they're going to print to the console invalid token again and if all goes we're going to return true that means the person is logged in then our claims which is basically this variable c that we created here so after this particular line runs we'll be getting our claims back so that is what our is logged in does so that is this logged in function that we used in our home page here and also in our login page so that's basically it. so before we move on i would like us to, i would like to mention again that so far so good if you are enjoying the video drop a thumbs up if you don't like the video whatever you don't like about the video drop it in the comment section below if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe if you are not new to the channel but you've been watching and you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing so that is basically what the our is logged in function does so with that let us just rerun the code again and see how things go so we run the code again so i'll do this and I'll go to my browser. Then I'll just delete this. So when I delete this, I'll try to log in again. I'll visit my own page. I can't because I'm not logging yet. So I'll use user to this time around. User two. Then the password will be password two. Now login. So now it's telling me welcome user two. So if I try to visit my login page back, it won't work this time around because I'm already logged in. So I can't log in when I'm already logged in. So it's clicking back to my own page. So that is basically it for this video. And if you look for every time when we try to log in at first to our home page, we just turn the token empty token string because we weren't logged in then. And after we we're logged in, this was the token we generated. So visiting the home page is going to return our token string for us again because when we visit the home page, we actually mentioned here in our phone home. So maybe when calling this is logged in method. So if you check our is logged in method we should have actually printed it this is it here so at this point we printed our token string so that's our token string so basically everything is the same thing but one thing you should notice is that after 15 minutes the particular cookie will expire which means the token will also expire so after 15 minutes the token will expire and if the person is online and the person tries to refresh the page if the person at the home page or any other page that needs authorization to access and the person tries refreshing the page or visiting another page that needs authorization to access the person will be redirected back to the login page for relogging in because the cookie has expired and also our token has expired so that is it for this video if you have any comments drop in the comment section below very important and if there's anything you don't like about the video also also drop it in the comment section i'm open to criticism so that way it helps me get the channel and uh, it helps me make the videos better and also if you haven't subscribed also consider subscribing so with that i'm ending this video see you in another